Welcome to episode 3 of MetaShift, my series where I discuss changes that are happening in the PvE meta, try to explain why, and hopefully make some sense of it all. Last time we talked about the changes that occurred after the Fractal patch. Since then, a huge balance patch was dropped on us that fundamentally changed the entire base structure of the raid meta. As you might expect, this is going to be a long video. So pack a lunch, make a snack, and let's get started. First up, Signet of Inspiration was eviscerated. What's scary is that even in its current new gimped form, it's still good. Almost all of the changes I'll talk about are fallout from that one single change. Some people might argue that the facet of nature change was important too, but that is actually incorrect. The Revenant facet of nature change at its core is just really about changing what armor, runes, and food a Mesmer has to use. Signet of Inspiration, however, is fundamental. A less visible, but still important change was the cap of five stacks of quickness per character. This means that you want the individual stacks of quickness to be as large as possible. The result is that small stack quickness is unwanted, and in fact, time warp doesn't really do much, and Mesmers no longer use time warp. So what does the world look like with this, with the SOI change in practice? Um, well, a bunch of things, actually. Let's start with squad composition. Previously, 442 or 424, whatever you called it, was the meta comp, since one Mesmer could grant perma quickness to all 10 players. The 5-5 Miro comp was also viable, but relied on the perma alacrity to make up for the change of a rev to a Mesmer. Some players felt more comfortable with 721, which made the same quickness, but allowed for a safer team comp using a pure healer like Ellie or Revenant in the one position. While technically you can kill all the bosses with, with any comp, and truthfully you could run double Mesmer in 721 for perma quickness, the point is that the meta comp moving forward for organized groups will be a 5-5 mirror comp. This is the only comp that can achieve permanent quickness and still bring four DPS oriented characters who all receive full buffs. The change from 442 to 55 has a lot of sub repercussions when it comes to the individual professions. So I'll go through each profession now and explain how they are affected by this and any other changes they may have received. Well, Mesmer is the obvious starting place. Um, Mesmers cannot rely on a Revenant anymore for Facet of Nature, so they have to gear in order to achieve 100% boon duration all by themselves. With Concentration Sigil and boon duration food, Mesmer needs about 37, well, needs exactly 37% boon duration from gear. The most ready solution is uh, almost full Berserker using leadership runes, a platinum doubloon, and a few pieces of commander's gear to get you to the exact 37%. For tanky specs, you can use scholar runes or leadership runes and enough commander's gear to hit 100% and your desired toughness level. There's really no single right answer on how to gear for tankiness, and honestly, since two Mesmers are going to be in every group from now on, and one has to tank, it will pay to be able to be versatile and play either glassy or tanky as needed. Some groups want their tank to only have one piece of toughness gear, others want 1404 toughness to avoid warrior res traits, and yet other groups will want a Mesmer tank who has maximum defenses as much toughness as they can get. So yes, versatility in your gearing will be the key. Additionally, most Mesmers are finding success trait-wise swapping out the Illusions trait line for Domination as the Signet cooldown trait synergizes significantly better with the current rotation. Alright, so let's talk about the Revenant. Many people, even people in top guilds, are calling this the death of the Revenant. Mesmers are using 100% boon duration now, so Revenant isn't needed in a 5-5, they say. In theory, it's true that there isn't a huge need for Revenant. Uh, but it turns out that, curiously, Revenant plays some roles that are still valuable. With the change to SOI, the Mesmer is spreading out fewer stacks of might, and a PS Warrior cannot might cap his team on his own, unless he significantly gimps his build to produce extra might. So some amount of trace might is needed to supplement the Warrior. Revenant fulfills this role well. Even without activating Facet of Strength, Revenant produces about 4 or 5 stacks of might passively for his squad. Additionally, with the 33% boon duration from the Facet of Nature, the Warrior will produce a lot more Might for his team, so Might will no longer be a problem. Revenant also produces protection as needed. 
This is vastly underestimated. If you do not bring a Revenant or a Hammer Guardian for this job, your Druids will have to gimp their build a bit in order to bring Stone Spirit. Bringing Stone Spirit is a definite sacrifice since Druid DPS utility skills are fairly large buffs. But Rev DPS is very low, some will say. They will argue that uh, four Ellies in the DPS slot is superior. Um, but you have to consider, maybe that's true, that, that four Ellies in the DPS slot is higher DPS, but you'll have issues might capping. Uh, you'll have to bring Stone Spirit on your Druids. You will have to uh, use leadership runes on your Mesmers. If you bring a Revenant, your Mesmers could use Scholar runes. Your Warriors will have easy might stacking, and your group will have protection during the high pressure phases. Um, add in the fact uh, of the might uptime and the protection, and it's not clear at all why anyone would prefer the double Ellie 5-5 DPS rolls against anything uh, except large hitboxes. For a boss like Gorsival or Keep Construct, it's clear that Ellie is so good that four Ellies is definitely sensible. But most teams will get far, far more out of a Rev or a Guardian in the second DPS slot uh, in each group than a second Ellie. So the obvious comparison then is with Hammer Guardian, who has an easier rotation than Revenant and comparable DPS. The argument goes that what a Rev gains in buffs, it loses in real-world rotational issues. Probably a fair enough statement uh, based on anecdotal data, but at best it's a wash and not really a home run in favor of the Guardian. I think that some people uh, that don't play the game much and just read comments from top guilds on Reddit can get caught up in statements that are overly definitive and jump to stronger conclusions than the uh, than a sober analysis would warrant. So is Revenant dead? Um, definitely not. And I think uh, time will tell uh, and reveal that it's not in that bad of a shape at all. Speaking of dead things, let's talk about the Necromancer. Well, ouch. Uh... Condi Damage Minion Master Viper Viper Horror or whatever they call the build is officially a dead build. Uh, the inability to maintain significant amounts of minions cuts the DPS of this build single target so low that virtually any other Condi Damage profession is preferable at Condi Damage. The, the exception to this is at Matthias, where Condi clearing capabilities of the Necro are well worth sacrificing DPS for from... Uh, by bringing a Necro, but but even that, you don't want to go overboard. One Necro is probably enough. Two Necros, you start getting into a situation where they're stealing Condi stacks from each other, and that lowers the DPS. Moving forward, Necromancers who wish to keep playing the Condi lifestyle will probably swap from Death Magic to Blood Magic, as Death Magic no longer provides any meaningful traits, and Blood actually does have a few useful traits for a raid group. If Necromancer isn't dead in the current raid meta, it is at very least on life support and barely breathing. Stay strong, Necro players. You'll certainly have another day in the sun. Moving on to happier subjects, let's talk about the Warrior. Um, initially, based on the patch notes, not much changed for the Warrior. In fact, the change to 5-5 was... Most of us looked at it initially as a buff, since Warrior, uh, no matter which build you use, benefits a lot from Alacrity. Uh, no part, no trait or skill in the warrior meta builds were affected or touched in this patch. However, the SOI nerf means that might stacking is no longer so easy with scholar runes and DPS food, or with the standard condition damage PS uh, build. So warriors have two real options. You can either always plan on having a revenant or hammer guard in their group, or they can prepare to make serious might. My current advice is to swap to Golden Fried Dumplings and Bountiful Stones for the 30% boon duration and Might on Crit. That does mean that with Truffle Steaks on your Power Warrior out of the picture, I am recommending reallocating a few pieces of Assassin's Gear to hit the 100% Crit 
chance. Um, in, but that's a topic for another video. Um, essentially, what this what this change to SOI means is that the Power PS build is is losing about 170 stats worth of DPS to these changes. So it is a fairly painful nerf overall, but somewhat manageable. Condi PS is in a harder spot. Without Rev or Guardian, it can't get to 25 might solo. So it's only really viable in a situation where you're going to want a Rev or Guardian in your group, which means small hitbox bosses only, uh, really. Luckily, the only large hitbox bosses are KC or Gorsival, uh, where Power PS was a much better build anyway due to its burstier nature. That said, if you are blessed enough to have a group that brings a Hammer Guardian or Revenant to a small hitbox boss, aka a smart group, you will get better results than you ever got before from Con DPS due to the perma alacrity. So in this case, uh, the changes were a bit of a wash uh, for Warrior, and you could optimistically look at it as a buff. Let's talk about another buff bot, the Ranger. A lot of people uh, were extremely worried initially, myself included, that nerfing the base heals of Celestial Avatar would result in the elimination of Druid build variety from the meta. Luckily, now that the dust is settled, we can see that the same builds are just as viable as before, thankfully. Kondi Druid will still be a mainstay in Wing 1, uh, and Berserker Druid will still be the go-to choice for organized groups, and in fact Magi's Druid received a nice buff from the scaling of the healing power, so it should actually be even better than before in the groups that brought them, especially for groups that use only one druid in a single healer formation. Also, for those uh, filthy zealot druids out there, I believe they saw a slight buff to their healing capabilities, so uh, it does push that build closer to being acceptable in my mind. An unrelated change to base ranger was the buff to ranger shortbow. Now, it's easy to say that Condi DPS Ranger is quite viable from a pure DPS perspective, especially in uh, small hitbox fights and fights like Veil Guardian and Matthias. I have another video about this topic on my channel, so I won't rehash everything again here. You can go check that out. But if you are a Condi DPS lover who has been burnt by the Necro nerfs and you aren't interested in playing an Engineer, this is probably the best solution available for your group, and I would try to look into that and check that out. All right, next up we have Guardian. Um, Guardian didn't really receive any changes that altered it directly, um, but the fallout from the SOI changes caused Guardian to be used a little bit differently than it was in the last meta. To recap a bit, in the 442 meta, Guardian was used with uh, Scepter Torch and Sword Torch as a pure DPS build that, bought, that brought along pretty good team buffs um, and very good CC capabilities. Since the damage scaled with the hitbox size with the Scepter build, the build was a really good all-rounder that was really welcome at any boss. Alternatively, you did have the Hammer build, which provided strong DPS and defensive support, and was often used in pugs uh, where those things were at a premium. So since the patch, a couple interesting trends have emerged, and these two builds have merged together. What we've seen is that the Hammer build with the Honor trait line make a comeback, because it makes about 5 might from the empowering might trait, which helps the warrior might cap. Very cool. The even cooler thing is that the swap set, uh, which used to be like a great sword, is now Scepter Torch, which means the build has scalable damage against big hitbox bosses and strong burst capabilities with double symbols. Guardian is well worth a DPS slot in the 5-5 comp now, if not two, one in each group, and if anything, its position in the meta has greatly improved. The Elementalist. The Burning Speed was unnerfed, and fans of the Dagger Warhorn Fresh Air playstyle rejoiced all over the game. But is there any room for the Dagger Warhorn Fresh Air build in the current meta? Early indicators are that there is. For some time now, groups have been using Fresh Air staff builds on their Ellies against bosses with small hitboxes. Against a DPS golem with a very practiced rotation, these builds are capable of doing pretty great damage. But, in my opinion, they're fairly unwieldy for the average player to maximize in practice, especially with the conjured weapons in the rotation. 
Dagger Warhorn's return solves these issues quite a bit by having a fun and satisfying rotation that is easier to operate in practice than the Fresh Air Staff build. While the Dagger Warhorn uh, at the top end is going to get slightly less DPS and a perfect rotation than Fresh Air Staff, I am confident that 99% of groups will get better small hitbox results with Dagger Warhorn in an actual raid environment. Other than that, not a great deal change for the Ellie in the meta, other than continuing to be really strong in the most desirable DPS class, which is something I'm going to elaborate on in a little bit when I touch base on Thief. Which brings us to the two black sheep in the current meta, Thief and Engineer. Engineer received a few uh, very minor buffs, but its position in the meta, or outside of it depending on your viewpoint, remains unchanged. In truth, Angie's position may have gotten worse, relatively speaking, since uh, DPS Condi Ranger has gotten so much more consistently viable. It truly continues to be dark times for NG mains. As far as Thief goes, I do feel pretty bad for them after this patch. Before this patch, Thief was the king of small hitbox DPS, and regained its place in the meta due to that, as well as the shared Basilisk Venom. However, a very subtle change has more or less taken back all that progress and pushed Thief out of the meta entirely. The switch to the 5-5 composition, among all the other things, uh, means that a permanent alacrity is part of the meta now. Thief gains very little DPS from alacrity, whereas Elementalist gains a significant amount. Ellie was already a bit better than Thief on large hitboxes, now it's significantly better. The Alacrity buff has made Ellie significantly more competitive on the small hitboxes where previously Thief was undisputed the king. Simply put, there are very little DPS-based arguments to bring a Thief. Well, so what about utility? Shared Basilisk Venom is really nice, but Guardian and Rev also bring good CC, and they bring unique buffs or strong support while helping the team might cap. Thief just doesn't compare favor favorably to any of those options for that slot. I will mention, since someone will inevitably ask, that Condi Thief in this patch did get more buffs, as it seems to do in every patch. Um, but it is still quite a bit far away from where it would need to be in order to be entered into the conversation. So you might ask, what does it need to be to enter into the conversation? Because isn't the single target DPS decent? The single target DPS is too low. Uh, for starters, and second, many of these fights in the raids have ads that you cleave. If you waste your shared Venom procs on ads, your DPS goes into the floor. This is just unacceptable, and, and its current implementation is just never going to work. Condi Thief would need something in addition to shared Venoms to make itself viable. So that's it guys, long episode. Um, thank you guys for sticking around and watching it. I hope you guys liked this video, and I hope it was helpful. If you have any comments or observations about the new meta, please leave them below. I'd be happy to hear them. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks.